Good evening, everybody. We are the team running from the law. This is Lucy, this is Tony, and this is Haley. So if we're here today, it's because we're presenting uh, our company and we decided to focus on Paul's and Haley Law Firm. So we really focus in terms of their uh, human resource departments. And a little background in Paul's and Haley, they were founded in 1972 as a three attorney law firm. Uh, their headquarters is in Kansas City, just next to the plaza. Uh, as of right now, in 2016, they have more than 20 locations through the United States and close to 800 attorneys. They experience 100 services areas and close to 70 industries. Um, so those are a little bit of their awards. I'm not going to go deep into them because, you know, they're just awards. So they were named fastest growing law firm for the past six years. They're really, they're really a growing firm and especially in Kansas City. Right now, they're the biggest firm in Kansas City. So we decided to focus on the um, on two special aspects. So we focus on the recruiting and the training there. So we met with Marcy Schumann, who's the corporate recruiting manager. We also met with Dan Tai, who's the training director. And finally, with Kim Asher, who's a legal administrative assistant. So Lucy is going to take care of the corporate recruiting manager, and then we'll pass on to Tony. All right. As Thibaut just said, I am focusing on the recruitment aspect of Polsonelli. And when we were interviewing Marcy Schumann, the recruiting manager, we got a deeper insight on job postings and recruitment of Polsonelli, the hiring process, the company values that Polsonelli really looks at while recruiting, and also measuring the success of the recruitment process and also the hiring process that each candidate goes through. All right, the biggest system that Polsonelli uses is the VI Recruit system. And this is a large uh, system that links training and performance management along with all of the job postings to Polsonelli's website. This has a list of every open position available and it's a place, it's a place that uh, anyone can have access to. Also, they look, um, they look at internal recruiting and also external recruiting. Obviously, externally, they utilize internet-based uh, websites a lot, like LinkedIn, Career Builder, Craigslist even, and then also department-specific websites if they are looking for a specific skill set. And internally, they look at the employee's recommendations and the referrals that are given for the job positions to see what candidates are best fit for the position. Once a resume gets to the recruiter, they look it over and uh, if the recruiter thinks that they are qualified, then they pass on the resume to the hiring manager for that specific position. Um, once the hiring manager thinks that the candidate is qualified and after looking over the uh, resume, then they will go through a phone screening with the candidate. And if the phone screening is successful with the behavioral and situational questions along with the normal strength weaknesses and salary based questions, then they normally are called in for an in-person inter interview. And this is whenever they normally also meet the department that the candidate could potentially be working with. So meeting those people. Um, the hiring process though differs depending on the position uh, and also the location that the job position is open at. So if it's a local in Kansas City, since all recruiting is done through Kansas City, the process is normally sh way shorter than if they were trying to find a job position for a position out in New York or so something. Also, um, every employee and attorney has to go through a background check if they're getting ready to be hired, but the um, no drug testing is done just because it hasn't been an issue in the past. And depending on the position for recruitment, uh, the recruiters look at the different uh, values that are, that are um, pertinent to the different job positions. So recruiters really work with the hiring managers to understand what they're looking for, the values for the company, and also what, they, what skill set and qualifications each candidate needs. Um, depending on the departments, those values change, such as IT positions, that is very technological based and marketing, they are looking more for someone who could be collaborative and work well with teams. Measuring success of the recruitment process and also the hiring process. Obviously in short term looking at it, um, are the positions filled? That's how they can measure it. Do they have a long, long list of open positions still? Or are they getting those filled pretty quickly? Long term though, and the most important um, successfulness of the recruitment process is how long are those candidates staying within Polsonelli? 
Are they finding the right person for the right position? Are those are those are those candidates staying uh, with the company a long term? Are they or are they leaving after six months, a year? So the turnover rates is a, also a long term measurement for how successful their recruitment process is. Additionally, they look at surveys and questionnaires that are filled out by the new hirees and also those who decline the position just to see where Pulsinelli stands in a competitive outlook and then also what can be changed so that the recruitment and hiring process is more smoothly. Now Tony is going to talk more about the training and development of the employees after they are hired. So we spoke with Dan Ty, he's the uh, director for the training um, at the law firm. He said basically there's three areas. They want to improve the employee performance, they want to measure increased productivity, and then he also talked about the training classes and the frequency of those classes. Um, the, the main thing is that they want everybody at the law firm um, to be as, have the, the, the most experience that they can, the best training as well. Um, their main thing is to educate the new employees and so they bring in the IT department as well as the HR department on this and the IT department really goes over some of the software usages, the security awareness, um, you know people bringing in flash drives, they don't want to catch viruses um, and so there's a lot that goes into this and they want everybody to be aware of things that are going on and they offer these different types of training and so what the law firm offers right now is they have a 15 minute brown bag that they call it which is basically a quick training that's over lunch um, that people can get done with pretty quick they also offer a computer based training that's usually purchased and that's usually on a CD-ROM or a video um, they also have e-learning and online based training um, which is sometimes those are just a little bit longer training um, and then they have the classroom and instructor led training which obviously is the, the managers of the departments as well as the training department. Sometimes they bring in people from the outside which um, work with people and it's usually a, a full day event when they do this. And they also do hands-on training which they'll go in your department, they'll go over certain areas of training that they feel is needed and they will actually work with you, you know, hands-on on each thing. Um, in addition to that, um, when it's over, when the training's over, they do a survey and they go over and they review it and figure out what's best for the next year um, to see what they can add. You know, we discussed measuring increased productivity um, it's in, in the staff versus the professional staff. Um, the staff usually goes through a little bit extra training, um, but everybody's required to go through sexual harassment and discrimination, um, no matter on the staff side or the professional side. Now the staff side is also required to do at least eight hours of training per year. And a lot of the trainings could be an e-learning training, which they take a test at the end, which they must pass with 80%. Um, and then as well as that, uh, the training, they usually get with, the training managers will get with the department heads. They will come up and conduct a lot of the training, uh, you know, for what works in each individual area. Um, and he said basically there's limited correlation between the training and productivity at this time. The company just doesn't have the correct software to really train and, and calculate this. Um, so to wrap it up, you know, the training classes and a frequency, their required training is once per year, the discrimination and sexual harassment, and that is a given for everybody. Now then they also have the optional training, which is job specific and career building and then classes are available about 20 hours a week they offer classes and training um, from the training department and the rest is up to the individual. At this time I'm going to send it over to Thibault and he's going to talk about the staff side. So thank you Tony. So now that we've really understand the way Paul and Ellie recruit their employees and the way they train them we thought something interesting would be to look on the other side and really talk to the employee about the recruiting process and the training process and get their feedback on it. So we met with one of the, one of the LAA at Paulzinelli, her name was Kim Ashert, and we really tried to understand why she came at Paulzinelli, how and what she thought about the hiring and the training process. So Kim came from a competitor, Ash Blackwell, which is another big law firm in Kansas City. Uh, she moved uh, to Paulzinelli with one of the lawyers uh, who she was really uh, working with at Ash Blackwell. Uh, but she also said, and that was something really interesting, that she moved to Paul Zinelli because she saw the potential that uh, Paul, Zinelli, Paul Zinelli had. 
uh, it was really a growing firm and she wanted to be part of it. One of the other reasons also she moved was regarding the benefits and the pay as uh, Paul Zanelli offered her a bigger salary than Ash Blackwell could as, as, the, as well as benefits. Uh, so we talked to her about the recruiting process and even if it was 15 years ago, uh, she still remembered it. So her interview process was based on an interview on site directly like we've learned from Lucy. Uh, so she was asked behavioral based question on how she would react if this happened, what she would do in order to be, to be effective and to, to do her job in the best possible. Uh, she was personally uh, offered her job directly after the interview as they really saw something special in her and uh, she, she qualified the process as an easy process uh, at the time. She said things may, may have changed but she really believed it was easy at the time. Um, now regarding the training, that's where we really focus our attention because it was really where she had more feedback and more recommendation possible to do. So she said the first week training, the first week when you, when you get a, as an LLA, you have a lot of training in order to be effective. She said it was not enough because they needed more, they just needed more time, there was just a lot of things to, to, to learn because it was really complicated. But she said that was not enough, so that's something she wanted really to address to work on. Uh, she said the training is really critical for the lawyers and their LAA, and that's really something that they should focus on because that will, if that benefits the LLA, if she's trained uh, perfectly, then she's going to be able to bring the results to the lawyers as soon as possible. And we all know that that's what lawyers really need, results as fast as possible in order to be effective at what they do. And finally, we talked about the required yearly training. So uh, she said the first year they had to do 13 hours, and then after that it was 8 hours in the following years. So she said that there have been some evolution and some really innovation in terms of the training, such as they really implemented really newly in 2012 the security training. But she said she said it's still lacking some some um, some innovation, and she was hoping for some for some more. So now that we've learned about all of this, we have some recommendation, and Haley is going to take care of this. Thank you, Thibault. So with a couple recommendations per department. So to start out with the recruitment and hiring. Um, department, our first recommendation was to create a hiring process survey that would be completed within the first 90 days of each new employee that's within the company. So the goal of this would be to improve the overall hiring process and to work on negative feedback that was given from that employee. Um, our second recommendation was to allocate more time for the recruiter in the searching process to ensure finding the right candidate for the vacant position that was this will save the company in costs and in their turnover. And then another recommendation was to look more internally to fulfill positions. This will encourage employees to advance their professional careers while benefiting the company by filling the position with a worker that has overall knowledge of the whole firm. Our last recommendation was to include drug testing as a part of this hiring process due to new legislation all new hires and all employees should randomly go through a drug testing process to ensure safety within the workplace. Next, we came up with recommendations for the training and development department. So the first one was to ensure continuous training over the compliance and security awareness. Um, this would uh, make a safe and comfortable work environment that the employees can keep up to date in these areas. The next was to make a structured training system that focuses on the type of law that the particular LAA will perform. This will um, help them with going back with more specialized education in their area instead of just watching or watching random videos of eight hours of training like Dan had mentioned was um, what they do now. So next, the other recommendation that we um, gave was to personalize the training for employees to give them the ability to learn something new and um, see how things work instead of just repeating the same training. Our fourth one was to assign a mentor to a new employee to show them how training works and to come binded with the company culture. And lastly, we decided was that the training department needs to have more of a like bigger pres presence within the um, training structure to take more of a proactive measure to ensure a quality training process for every employee. And those are our recommendations. Thank you.